In this six-week course, you'll learn how a part-time retail trader can compete in the financial markets. Specifically, you're going to learn how to run a portfolio of simple, low-touch systematic trading strategies. We'll choose those strategies really carefully, because we want to pick strategies that you can actually trade. We need low-frequency strategies on liquid assets that you can trade if you have a job and a smaller account. But we also need to minimize competition with smarter, faster, more aggressive market players. Why? Well, let's talk about that. One thing you'll probably have noticed is that trading is really hard. It's hard to make money trading, especially as a retail trader. And we don't think traders take the problem anywhere near seriously enough. But whilst we know it's hard, we clearly don't think it's impossible. Otherwise, we wouldn't be having this discussion. The persistent performance of the best trading firms tells us it's possible to make good money trading. But can you, a retail trader, compete with those guys? Please, of course not. You'll get eaten alive. You need to win on your own terms. And you win by playing an entirely different game. Your mission as a retail trader is to seek out the easiest, least competitive games. In poker, the most reliable way to make money is to be the house. The house collects a portion of the stake in each hand in exchange for facilitating the game. The players compete with each other, but nobody's competing with the house. It's a win-win situation. The house is happy to provide the service, and the players are happy to, to pay for it. And win-win games are stable. They're likely to persist because they don't involve competition for the same resources. The best game for the retail trader to play also looks like this. It might not be obvious, but these games are out there, and we find them by asking questions like, can we do something others find valuable? Can we take on risk others find unattractive? When others are highly constrained, can we make life easier for them? When, we, when they have to sell, can we buy for them? When they have to buy, can we sell from them? The games we identify with these questions are the very best, most reliable ways to make money as a trader or investor. These are stonkingly obvious high probability edges, and you'll be playing these games first. As you said, trading's hard, so you don't want to be a hero. You want a stonkingly obvious high probability return source in your portfolio, something you can really believe in, something that gives you confidence to build on top of it and then add more ambitious things. Now, your stonkingly obvious edge is going to be a simple long-only risk premium harvesting strategy. Certain market risks are unattractive because, let's face it, no one likes losing money. And exposing yourself to those risks tend to be rewarded with excess returns, at least over the long run. So in this strategy, we look to get exposed to those risks intentionally. And we look to minimize and manage the risks that don't pay us. In this strategy, you'll win by taking on risks that others are trying to avoid. It's win-win, it's sustainable, it's something you can be confident about. And you could stop here, and many traders do, but we believe, and I'm torturing the poker analogy a bit here, we believe that there are opportunities to play with the very worst poker players. Okay? You don't want to play poker with world champions. You want to be at the table with the drunk dentists. You want to go where the competition's low. So this leads us to a discussion on market inefficiencies. We know the market's inefficient enough for Citadel and friends to extract enormous profits from it. But is there any less left for us? That's a really important question. And you'll learn that you need two things to be true in order to find inefficiencies that you can exploit. Underlining both of these things, by the way, is an understanding that you're always trading against other people. You need to be buying from other people too cheap or selling to other people too expensive, at least on average. So with that in mind, first, you need to find times when a group of traders are willing or forced to trade at inopportune prices. To do this, you'll learn about end users in the market and their constraints and objectives. But that's not enough. You also need to find occasions where exploiting these inefficiencies is relatively unattractive for the bigger aggressive players. There's a reason Citadel buys order flow from Robin Hood. It's because they know they can eat all the edge so that no inefficiencies escape. You can think of it as a big net around the inefficiencies, making sure no profit opportunity leaks out to the outside world. And you could sit outside the net with your mouth open like Pac-Man here, but all the good stuff will have been kept in the net and eaten by the big boys. 
However, not everything is always so neatly contained. Sometimes inefficiencies leak out because exploiting them is relatively unattractive. Maybe they're just too massive to be absorbed. Maybe the opportunities are too small or too noisy or too capital intensive or too awkward or too scummy to be worth the big boys getting out of bed for. In these cases, opportunity often leaks through. So if you know where and when to sit with your mouth, mouth open, you can feed yourself and your family on alpha scraps, just like this happy peck man here. So understand this, and you know where you might identify inefficiencies you can exploit. To help you with this, you'll learn to make simple, testable elevator pitches. These are simple statements of what would cause the inefficiency, why it wouldn't be fully gobbled up by others who are quicker or better informed, and how you might harness it on average. Now, it should be simple and it should be easy to believe. A five-year-old should be convinced of your elevator pitch and should be able to understand why it makes money. If not, it's probably too complicated or too uncertain. There's probably nothing there. So as part of this course, we'll go through examples of lots of these, okay? And if doing this sounds intimidating, it's probably because it is a little. You probably aren't used to thinking like this and maybe you don't have the experience to trust your instincts on this just yet. So we'll talk about it a lot. Lots of examples, lots of discussion. You'll talk to me a lot about it and I'll make sure you get it. So now you've come up with your elevator pitch. What do you do next? Well, sometimes the pitch is enough to start designing a strategy to exploit it. And this is especially true if the pitch is really compelling and you're working with a new market. You know, you've got limited data. But that's not true most of the time. Most of the time you want to see clear evidence of the inefficiency in the past data. You want to see that it is indeed leaking out. You know, the money's coming out of the net so Pac-Man can eat it. So we start with the market structure, the players, the effect, then we look at the data. And this doesn't need to be complicated, it'd be super simple, okay? We'll do super simple data analysis in Excel, which is all we need for this kind of stuff. It's simple, practical stuff that anyone can do with a few pointers. Now, if you want, if you write, can write code, you can use Pandas or Dply or even MATLAB if you want, you know, be my guest. But on this course, all we're gonna assume is that you know what a spreadsheet is. So now you understand where to look for an edge, both in market intuition and data. So now we can start thinking about a set of trading rules to exploit the effect. The rule here is the less you add, the better. Okay? Every time you add a rule, you're adding a way to screw up. You're adding a way to mess up the trading of a good edge. You should know that systematic trading isn't a thing of great precision. Okay? We identify a noisy edge that we think we can exploit. And we can only exploit it noisily, right? We're Pac-Man with our mouth open in roughly the right place, you know? We're there, and to use another analogy, we're just swinging the bat at everything that looks like edge, okay? It's not rocket surgery. So you'll see this stuff. You'll see how we put together very simple trading rules to harness our simple, noisy elevator pitch edges. And you'll see how when you combine those super simple rules-based strategies together, the whole can be greater than the parts. It's a nice sort of practical kind of display of diversification and the benefit that it can have. Now, at this point in the course, you're well on your way to having a high-performing, low-touch trading portfolio. You have a stonkingly obvious high-probability edge at the bottom of the pyramid, and you have an ensemble of relatively uncompetitive inefficiencies on top. Now, at the very top of the pyramid is pro stuff. You know, you're never going to be able to compete up here, so don't even bother, right? So we ignore that and we concentrate our efforts on the bottom of the pyramid, the yellow stuff. Now we're there, we've got the yellow stuff, we'll wrap up the course with a simple step-by-step -step system for managing the portfolio. And we'll discuss some of the gritty realities of managing a systematic trading portfolio, both practically and emotionally. So how does this play out? How does the course work? Well, it's a six-week course and you're gonna be hearing a lot from me. Um, I'm James, by the way. I should have mentioned that at the start. First, you'll get on Slack and you'll start, mentioning, you'll start meeting your teammates. Now, ask any questions, say hello, talk about whatever you like. We're on there all the time. Um, as a trader, I'm in front of the screen a lot. And we've got members who can help out all around the clock. Slack is where our main real-time discussion happens. We'll talk away on here until you really get it. So just no questions dumb. No, just ask everything on there. 
And if you still don't get it, we'll discuss it on our Zoom webinar, which takes place every Thursday. Now, we stay on Zoom until all the questions are answered. That's usually about two hours, but we make sure everything you need to know is addressed in the first hour. Finally, a course module is released every Monday. There's video that'll just look, look just like this, right? As well as more rambly live video, as if this wasn't rambly, right? Um, then we've got written materials, we've got exercises, stuff to go through. It's not, it's not a huge amount, you know? If you, if you put aside two hours a week, two or three hours a week, you'll get through it easily. We try and distill it down into the stuff you really need to know. So what do I want to get out? What, what do I want you to get out of this? Well, it's really important to me that you see the light on a few things in this course. So you get some fully built trading strategies and you get to see all the thinking and the work that went into them. And that's really cool, right? Not many people do that. But that's not the main thing I want you to take away. What I want you to take away is I want you to go away feeling like you've got a really good understanding of the markets. You've got a really good realistic mental model of the markets. And I want you to feel like you know where you can be competitive and where you can't. You need to be realistic about that. I want you confident with simple data analysis. It's often all you need. And I want you being realistic about what can be achieved in the markets as a retail trader. Having the discipline to grind out edges is also super important, right? You're Pac-Man, you're sat outside the net in roughly the right place with your mouth open and you are, your experience of that is dominated by noise. We need to understand that and we need to be disciplined. Finally, I want you confident that there's always going to be new edges. There's always new trades, right? And now you have the insight, the tools, the skills and the confidence to find them and exploit them. So I think this course is great. I'm really proud of what we're doing here and I can't wait to meet you as soon as you enroll. We'll be starting module one on the 3rd of May and I'll see you inside.